In this presentation, we're going to upload the credit card information for use within the bank feeds. In other words, we're going to connect to the bank or imagine we're connecting to the bank, but we're going to be using a CSV file in order to upload those credit card transactions and then populate our financial statements in a similar way as we have done with the banking information. Get ready because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to be adding the credit card information at this point. So the credit card information is similar to the banking information, except for, of course, in the credit card, we have a liability type of account. So if we take a look at the bank statement, then it's going to look something like this with a credit card statement. We'd have a similar kind of transaction statement. We're going to have the beginning balances, and then we have could have payments on the credit card, and then the charges, which are going to increase the balance, and then the balance due at the end of the time period. We're going to have the information, which is going to be the things we purchase with the credit card, of course, and the transactions for it, and then the payment type of information. So you can see it's a similar type of process. It's going to be run through a banking institution, and therefore we're thinking, well, can we, can, can we just kind of import this stuff in the same kind of fashion as we would with the bank feeds? And in most institutions, we should be able to do so. So in a simpler fashion, we want to take just the transactions. So we're going to be taking just the transactions. We could get those transactions through the bank fee. Note that as we go through this process, when we show this uh, CSV file, we had it before where these items were negative. These are going to be the uh, charges that we make on the credit card are negative here. And then we had uh, this item being positive, being a payment. It's actually going to be reversed. We uploaded that to the system and it put it in the system backwards. Now, note that's kind of a problem with a CSV file because when you download this information from the financial institution, it may not always download perfectly for the upload. So that's why uh, it could be actually easier to use something like a QBO type of file to download it and upload it. So just be aware uh, we have adjusted that. So when you get the file, it'll, it'll look like this and that should upload into the system uh, properly. But as we go through these first kind of sections, all these numbers will be negative and uh, this number will uh, be positive. Again, how do you fix that if you're connecting to the bank in practice? Well, the actual connection, if you do an actual connection uh, to them, it should, it should feed over correctly. And if you do need to download the data uh, and you just wanna make it as easy as possible to download and then upload, it would probably be easiest with a file other than a CSV file like the QBO or the QuickBooks file, which should uh, upload and, and be uh, easy for, the, for both sides of the system to read connecting to the bank and having an uh, import automatically, or and we might get them from uh, the bank download of a CSV file or some other kind of a file that we could download from the institution in a similar way we've discussed for the banking information. Bottom line is we're just gonna get the raw data, which is basically just gonna be the data, the description and the amount. And that's gonna be what we're gonna upload into our system. And we'll be in a similar situation then at that point where we'll have to assign that information out to the correct accounts once it's been input into the system. So we're going to imagine here that we have downloaded the CSV file from the uh, institution. And that CSV file is going to be this one. So you should have access to it if you're following all along with the course. That's going to be the credit card transactions.csv. So it's a CSV file that we will be using in order to upload to our system. Now you, you may want to uh, connect to the bank in practice, like you may want to connect to the bank and have them come in automatically. Similarly, as with the transactions for the bank, however, uh, there might be situations where you want like a whole year of credit card data or something like that. You might not be able to get that from the bank and therefore you might go to the institution and see if you could download this information. If you do so, you want to download it possibly in a QBO, QuickBooks type file or in a, C in a CSV like we're doing here. Uh, so that you can then then upload it and that's the process we'll do at this point once you have uploaded it or done the bank transfers you're in essence at the same point at that point the information now in the system and now we have to basically assign it to the proper location the proper accounts so i'm going to close this back out and then we're going to go back into our system over here now there's a couple things we need to do we're going to set up the new bank account but we're going to need an account for it to go to I like to set up the account first, so I'm going to go to the drop down. I'm going to go to the chart of accounts to set up this account. We need a credit card type of account uh, so that we can feed our information into that credit card type account. Within the chart of accounts, we have the assets and then we have the liabilities and credit cards. So we want to be in liabilities and credit cards. The first section then is the credit card. So I'm going to add a credit card. So we're going to add that. I'm just going to call it a credit card type of account. That's the one we want. I'll just call it credit card and then Amex maybe we're gonna pretend it's an American Express credit card here 
And that's all I'm going to add. I'm going to save that. And there we have our account set up. Then we can go and add our bank feeds and just uh, try to tie them out to that account. So next we can go to the banking. One way we can do it is we can go to banking down here. There's a few different ways we can get into that uh, banking section. I want to say uh, connect accounts. So I'm going to connect an account. And this is where you would go if you just wanted to connect your, your bank account. So if you had the major credit cards like an Amex or something like this, you can go through this process and connect your bank accounts uh, once again. So you want, you'd want to go through this process and obviously you would need the login type of information. Different institutions might have a slightly different login information, but your credentials in order to log into the system and possibly you'd have to log into your uh, credit card company account in order to do that. Now, again, we're going to imagine that we're going to go to the bank then or to the credit card institution, in our case, American Express, download the CSV file, take that raw data and then upload it into our system. Something we may want to do if we want to enter like a whole year's worth of data to do that we're going to go back up to the accounting tab up top we're going to go into the transaction information so the transaction information i'm going to change this drop down to just the credit card so i want to just make sure i'm on the credit card account now since we have a couple different accounts with the bank feeds nothing's in here thus far then we can go to the more drop down and we want to upload a bank statement so we're going to go through and we're going to upload the bank statement at that point also note that I did change the dates back to 2019. It was 2020 last time you saw the file. So I'm because that would have been some dates in the future as of the recording. So I'm going to bring it all back to 2019. Back to the trend. We're going to upload here. Now these are the formats you can upload it in. The most common types of formats you can download from an institution is like the QuickBooks file and the, and the Quicken file. These are probably two files that are less likely to have actual problems when you do the upload feature. They're, they're going to be more standardized. Uh, but you also have the CSV file. The, the nice thing about the CSV file is you could adjust them yeah, or add more stuff to it if, if you need to. Um, you can actually open up the CSV file with an Excel document and so on. So then we're going to go down below and I'm going to be uh, adding this. This is going to be a credit card. And then I'm going to say I'd like to browse for our file. So then we'll upload this information. Then it's going to go through the confirmation process. So I'm going to be like paraphrasing here. It's asking us if the date field is correct. We're going to say, yep, that's the right one. You picked up the right field there. Then it's going to ask us about the next field, the amount field. It's going to say, hey, is the amount field correct? And we're going to say, yep, that's the right one. Let's pick that one up. And then the next one I would suppose would be the uh, description field. That's going to say, hey, is the description field correct? And we're like, yep, that one's it too. So we're going to say, okay, there. And then we get one final kind of check before we actually upload the data. So now we're going to, this is the last one. It's going to upload it once we do this. So we're going to say, yep, let's upload that information, see what it does. Once upload, then I usually would like to go to this little drop down. And now that we have multiple uploaded accounts, go to uh, the one we're working on, which in this case would be the credit cards. So here we have the credit card information has now uploaded. That looks good. Let's check our financial statements now because unlike QuickBooks or uh, QuickBooks Online or like Zero, it's not really in limbo right now. They actually affect the financial statements, but we know where they're going to put them on the financial statements and then we adjust them. That's kind of how it works here. So I'm going to right click on the tab up top. I'm going to duplicate that tab. Going to be opening up our financial statements, that being the balance sheet and the income statement to see where it put this information and what we're going to have to do to adjust it so we're gonna which will be similar to what we saw with um with the banking accounts of course so we're gonna go down to the reports to do so we're gonna be opening up that balance sheet report once opened i'm gonna right click on the tab up top and duplicate it gonna go back then to the tab to the left we're gonna go back down to the reports on the bottom and we're gonna be opening up then the income statement the p and l the profit and loss then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet and we will then uh, change the date, bringing that date back to 2019, update that report, then scroll down to the bottom. I'd like to show the detail, please. And then, of course, we have the credit card information. So here's the credit card information that we've entered into the system. Notice it doesn't match uh, our credit card statement because it's it's only showing uh, the activity that that is in place. It's not showing the beginning balance. So then I'm going to I'm going to drill down on it and look at the look at the more detail within the credit card. So I'm just going to click on the credit card here and that'll open up another tab to the more detail. Also note that we entered the credit card data for April and we didn't we, in this case we, we're trying to make it so it's similar to the bank feeds where we're not going to have that strict cutoff when we download the data. So I mean if you're doing bank feeds it's going to just keep on the bank feeds keep on coming in. It's not going to stop at the end of the month. So notice we have some April data. And then we have uh, three transactions that, that we're going to uh, include 
that were in May that have been included in the system. So that's what we have there thus far, and we're going to have to enter that beginning balance uh, in order to basically reconcile. And then on the income statement side of things, if we go back to 2019 and we update this report and scroll on back down and show the details, then now we have this uncategorized income that's related to the payment we made. So we made a payment on the credit card. They put it here. We're going to have to recategorize that. That's just, you know, that's what the system automatically does. That's what we do. And then we have the uncategorized expenses. That's where all the, the decreases went or all the charges that went. And then we have to take these out of the uncategorized expenses expenses and categorize them. So in essence, we're in the same situation now where we base, we need to go through these uncategorized items. We'll do that with the accounting transactions field and then just simply categorize them. So we'll start on that or we'll be working on that in future presentations. That's it for now. Let's get out of here.